Right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 What is up? What is good? What is good, all you beautiful people out there on the interwebs, on the Yurturbs, and the Twitch lands, and all that other fun stuff? You are here finally after a really. You are here after finally a really long freaking time without the gamers, as well the gamers roundtable being here for episode nine of the gamers roundtable here on Gamers and Mead. So now I know we don't have the whole we don't have the uh, the whole crew here right now, but guess what? You got us three chuckle fucks to tonight. So just to let you guys know, so. Up in the top left corner, we have the one and only legendary leader of Gamers and Mead. He is, he is the madman himself, the one and only Captain Tenrak Taylor, the titanically terrible, who looks just uh, a little bit like Dr. Evil. You're making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as and then, finally, to round everything out, we have the man, the myth, the classy legend himself, the one and the only top hat wearing... Shoot, I blanked on the name. Firebane! Firecrotch, I mean, what? I mean, what? I <laughs> no, I wanted to think of something like, <laughs> like, I was thinking like, oh, the top hat wearing oh, titan. Yeah. Cblaze973, hey, thank you so very much time? for the follow. <laughs> <laughs> we can't tell them that Am secret. I at least getting paid enough for it? Oh, God. Firebane, we can't tell them that secret. They'll bring you to Area 51 again. Oh, God. I've been there, it's scary. Yeah, <laughs> but no, he is the top hat wearing Titan Firebane, the man, the myth, the legend from the West Coast, and we are really, really glad to be back after so freaking long. Oh God, I'm life! Glad to be back after what is it? Three fucking weeks I've not been on this shit because I've been so busy. Yeah, life yeah, is just so life's just a bitch. Weeks. It's been a long time. Yeah, life life has just life has just been. Uh, life has just been life. It's been a bitch. But, you know what? We get through it. We get through we it. Do. Yo, Stream Mario playing Doom. St Yo, guys, Stream Mario's jamming up on Doom over here. Hey, Stream Mario, how you doing out there, buddy? What's up, Streeter? All right, so yo, um, so w just want to say right now, Cblaze973, thank you so very much for the follow. Also, um, we'd like to take the time right now to thank Amelia Malikar, Nolan Nova, and, uh... And then uh, Nightwolf2009, who followed over a month ago. But thank you guys all so, so freaking much for the follows. You guys are amazing. We salute you. Now, all the MVPs, I mean, whatever that is. M Y'all the VIGs, the very important ghosts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ooh, gamers, what he said. Gamers. Very yeah. important ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very important ghosts. All right. So, all right then. So now, um... As par tradition on Gamers and Meat, I should just make sure that right before we get into everything, I should know, I should let you all know that I have come equipped with Dirt's <clears throat> Nuts! Yes! You just enjoy those rolling around deep inside your. Anyway! <laughs> oh, God! Ooh, Damn wow. it, Firebane! Getting all up in there. Oh my god. Yeah, but yeah, of course I've come with these nuts. Uh, nuts and chocolate trail mix. Alright, and then Ooh. now we're going to be doing something different tonight when I. There's, oh, hashtag pew pew. Hey. Thank you so very hey, much hashtag. for the host, man. Thanks for the, thanks to to you, thanks for the toast. <laughs> hashtag thanks for the toast with jam. Yes, thank yes, you for the toast. I like toast. <laughs> I like toast. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. toast with just butter on it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, lightly toast. Like, all like sup, girl? Toast all sup, girl? Hello there, all sup, hey, girl. All Welcome sup, girl. to the Gamers Roundtable. Thank you so much. She's just and... popping in for a quickie. Don't worry, we'll leave the money on the counter. Oh, we have to give her cab fare? No, oh, I don't God. think so. That comes out of the... is, she, is she giving us cab fare? I don't know oh. how this works. <laughs> oh, Christ almighty. Um, okay. Are, all, are all three of us the booty call? Like, is that, is that what's happening? Oh, it twice as much, or three times. Well, it's Dave twice as much. Oh, Christ. Oh, yeah. Okay, but now, <laughs> but now, he, this is going to be very interesting, all right? So, so now, as usual, Dave, your this... Your mic is going in and out, man. Oh, are you Who's serious? This? Dave, yours is Dave, fun. your mic is... Dave, you're going... Yeah, okay, all right, really okay, am, am, like am, I, am, I, am I Am I? Am I still here? Am I... Like, up and loud. <laughs> all sub girl, da booty. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so... Okay, is my mic good now? Is it? Is it better? Eh. Like, eh. Meh. Oh, God. 
Oh, there we go. They are, Whatever they you are. just did, if you like stuck it in your mouth, that probably just made it better. Is, okay. Whatever it right. is, uh, keep it in your mouth. Oh, for the love of God. Okay, I'm just going to get to it right now. So as usual, this this stream is brought to you by Taylor's Inner Charlie Kelly as I reveal... Ready for this? As I reveal... Cheese? This. Cheese with tomato. But most importantly... There's, there's where, where's tomato the freak out? No, and there's no tomato in it. The tomato is separate. The tomato. Oh, okay. Yeah, the tomato well, that, is separate. That's better here. then. <laughs> yeah, here. The, the, what is okay, this? The cheese. This is the cheese. Taylor, where's the freak out? You're supposed to be like, cheese! I also, I'm like editing stuff right now. That and like when you said tomato, my heart sunk a bit because cheese should only be paired with more cheese. No, cheese goes great with tomato. You do that with a little basil on top. You oh, know, maybe a touch oh, of garlic. No, you me, right? Parsley. I got parsley. I'm just like, okay, we're not going to have enough time for me. I'm not going to have enough time to be able to actually fully cook this on the counter, but I basically am going to do cheese and tomato for tonight. A little parsley, a little olive oil, because I'm because I'd be gourmet like that. Oh, look, see, Opsop Girl's doing Dave, it right. Wait, cheese. Dave, cheese. Yes, you, there it is. Dave, are you a vegetarian? No, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm omnivore. I didn't have a word about this. <laughs> no, but no, 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 Firebane, I'm an omnivore. <laughs> that hurt my throat a lot. Oh, Christ. You didn't put the hamster there. Yeah, but now, of course, just for those of you guys that haven't been around in a little bit, we need to introduce the newest member of Gamers in Mead, which is this little guy right here. He's a raven that I won courtesy of Firebane in a raffle that he did. And Say his name. His name is Gil Faison. Yes, Charmed. I don't know what that means. It's from the right, crow. No, shark. don't. You already told me. Don't worry about it. I already told you, or is that Brandon? No, that was me. Oh, I told. Oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gil Faison from Too Much Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, this uh, this little this little guy here is Gil Faison, and he is now a permanent member of the Gamers and Meat family. And then, uh, and then for my drink of choice for the evening, I will be drinking Guinness Extra Stout in my Taylor. You didn't see this. Look at this, Gohan Pint Glass. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Gohan pint glass. Are you going Super Saiyan or like... No, no, no. It looks like Gohan's pissed though, but I don't think he's going Super Saiyan. But no, but the really <laughs> cool thing is too, is that I get to use Allegra's uh, Christmas present that she that she gave me. Yeah! So what you're saying is your patch is Ohulahan. Yeah, basically, yeah. Because it's sterile and you like the taste. Yeah, but yo, check this out. So this is the Christmas present Allegra gave me. It's a freestanding draft system. I finally put the batteries in right. And basically, it dispenses my beer like a regular beer tap. See that? That's what's up. And then... All right, gentlemen, I don't know about you... But yeah. I think we've uh, kept these good people waiting long enough. Let's oh, no, hop definitely. on, do some uh, some news. Yeah, let's let's not let's stop gilding the lily. Firebane, your goddamn mic just not worked right there. Still not working. It's, it's it's mute. Oh god, it's mute. Am I the only one not having issues tonight? This is great. This hasn't happened in I don't know forever. Wait, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so all is good. All, yeah. all is all all is crispy keen. Oh yeah! I was saying that. Hey, I've got a gin martini. Yeah. Well, I'm the only one without any fucking liquor. God damn! I'll, I'll be drinking got, after. I'm this. disappointed in you. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Don't worry. After this, I'll be drinking, and then tomorrow morning for work, I'm gonna probably have coffee with. Oh, what type of beer are you drinking, Allsop Girl? And you said before co work, you'll be having coffee. <laughs> with booze in it. Oh, with coffee with booze. It. Irish coffee. Ooh. Dead Irish coffee dough. See, not bad. Not bad a choice. I can't do that before I go to work. But I definitely do enjoy myself a good Irish coffee. Oh, the yeah. The liquor helps my brain think. <laughs> and here it is straight from it the tap. It helps me with the thought. It helps me with thinking stuff. So, wait, what's Dave saying? Oh, my here? God, what? that's good. Oh, this straight. See, this wonderful. tastes like it's straight from the tap. Straight that from a bar tap. Hell of a head that you got going on there. Yeah, it's Guinness Extra Stout. It's Guinness Extra Stout. All right. But yeah, so hey, now to the legendary question that starts us that that starts everything. Who's gonna start off? Well, um, guys, do you mind? 
Firebank, go, go ahead. I was about to I'll, say I'll, anyone but me. <laughs> okay, not a problem. I'll do this one because this is just a quick shout out uh, type thing. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do one of my hats off here. And the reason for the hats off is today uh, we'd like to all, as all of us nerds, gamers, geeks, you know, um, shut ins and video nuts, um, take your hats off and a special bow of the head and just a quick moment of silence to Turu Awa. Awatani, the creator of Pac-Man, has passed away at age 91. To all of us out there, this is a man who helped design a game oh, that helped lead yeah. oh, just a generation upon generation of video gamers. Yeah. So, that is very sad and the passing of him. Yeah, May he rest in peace. And hashtag, thank you very much for the follow, my man. Thanks, sorry. hashtag. Yeah, thank you very much for the follow. Um, sorry I couldn't address you like right there, but yeah, creator of Pac-Man passing away at 91, it's a damn shame it's always the good ones yeah but 91 i'm not gonna sit there and go you know oh this is sad who would have seen it coming it was 91 I mean, come on oh yeah no no no. it's a ripe old it age was, it was time yeah so yeah all right what about you dave what do you got well uh, i've got two more and we'll just kind of move it around to one per i see all right well um Right now, I've actually got a little something from uh, from GameSpot.com. Sergeant Snuggles, what's going on, dude? Thank you so very much for joining hey, in on the case. Sergeant chaos. Snuggles, it's good to see you, buddy. Sergeant Snuggles, give me a hug. Give him a hug. <laughs> so, anyways, though, um, uh, the uh, artic- the first article I'm going to be opening up the show with um, after such a long damn time. Uh, something, little something that I um, that I that I picked up off of the interwebs and. Uh, and then also, Taylor, um, get ready for the lulls because this article was written by our favorite author, whose name we love to mispronounce, Eddie McCooch. <laughs> That's not a real name, right? Eddie no, it's, McCooch. To be honest, I actually looked this up. His his last name is actually pronounced McCoo, but I'm just like, I'm sorry. He's now been he's now been cemented in gamers and mead lore as Eddie McCooch. It's like, that's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. But no, so, Taylor, this is something actually you might be um, not sure if you haven't haven't, uh, heard about it right now, but it's actually some ESO news, actually. I more than likely have seen it because I get emails from them all the time. Okay, so... I just don't play all all the time. Well, let me add this. All Sop Girl, thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so very, Woo! very much for the follow. Alsop Girl MVP. Yeah, yeah, Alsop Girl MVP. But yeah, so essentially what's going on is that um, uh, ESO actually released uh, so, um, a teaser for something that's going to be going on uh, that's going to be going on tomorrow. It's uh, Bethesda's basically just announced some has announced a um, a thing for get this the game's next chapter. Ooh. The game's next oh. chapter. I might have to get back into this. Yeah. So here, so here's the, th- so basically here's the whole thing about this. Um, also, just to let you know, guys, I have music playing in the background. So if it's too loud, just let me know and I'll adjust the volume. But so, um, so here's the thing that's basically happening. So they're broadcasting the event. They're gonna do it live on Twitch tomorrow, which is gonna be at um, just for the t- just to have the times right here. So Pacific time, it's gonna be 11 a.m. Eastern time is going to be at 2 p.m. and Grand Meridian is 7 p.m. So those are all the uh, times for you guys right there. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Grand Meridian. So it's going to be all on Twitch and essentially like um, what they're doing is just literally a big reveal. They actually also put it out to the fans like, what do you guys Dave, want? Your mic yeah, is- Dave, we lost no. you again, bro. Oh come on, are you shitting me, dude? I'm like the only oh, no, one we're having problems you. tonight. This is great. I don't actually yeah, have to worry not, about it. No. Maybe it's because I'm not hosting it where I'm not having problems myself. Well, this time it's your fault. Jeez. Oh, wait, we heard that. All right. Um, okay. Hi. All right. Now, yeah, here, I might need to just also bring up my mic panel just in case. Dave the Nut is the bottom screen up in your top left. That is... That is Tenrack uh, Taylor the Terrible. Sure, right there. And I'm... I'm <laughs> Fire Bay, no short change yourself. You are the man and myth and the legend of the West Coast. <laughs> oh, the stream can hear Dave when you two can't. Wow. Well, thank you for the observation, Allsop. Oh, no, if the stream can hear them and we can't, then that's fine. Uh, thank yeah, you for letting us know. Yeah. We'll just be a little lost. 
<laughs> okay, but yes, yeah, so essentially the way it's going to work is that um, Bethesda is doing this big reveal for and asking all of the players of ESO, what do you guys want for the next chapter? Although, there is a possibility that it actually might be spoiled. Um, because because essentially there's some information that actually states that there was files that were discovered um that that was discovered apparently it was like a leak um no one knows but it's like this but it's it was essentially just a whole bunch of things that got leaked out and there's evidence to suggest that there's there's evidence to suggest um thank you street i'm glad uh, i'm glad that you can hear me there's some evidence to suggest that pretty much there's a leak and i will tell you this like leaks ruin so much stuff like, what do you get? Like, what, yeah. how do you guys feel? Like, with leaks? Um, you're right. I think the leaks. I don't even like um, the whole pre-game. Like, people get to be jump onto the game beforehand, alpha, beta, all that stuff. I don't even like that. Um, so when somebody goes and leaks, that's much worse because that wasn't allowed by the company. Yeah, you know, exactly. It, I feel that it takes away from the fun. It takes away from the surprise. I like a good trailer, and I like to go in and explore the game for what it is. And go and find out what's going to happen without having somebody say, "Hey, by the way, this is going to happen." Yeah, I know, right? It's it's so stupid. I really hate the fact that a lot of this that 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 that, that a fair amount of that there's actually even something that's going to that's suggesting that there was a possible leak. You know, it's there's some guys that think like, you know, "Ooh, I'll get a lot of notoriety from the press if I leak this to them." Awesome! I'll be just like uh, uh, Julian Assange. No. No, you're just going to be that guy that we will all hate because you you spoiled shit. Um, I mean, and we don't want another commercial. It, it really all comes down to, like, how childish that people are. Just because I have had no issues, really, with, with, like, people that I know who are interested in games that I did betas and alphas for just because... I wouldn't spoil it for them because, you know, that de defeats the whole fun of the game for them. Wow. But, like, there, then you have those people who are like, oh, I'm in the beta, I'm in the alpha, here's all this, 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 this that happened. It's like, well, great, there goes and, me buying the game. Yeah, and see, now, now the only exception to that would probably be, like, H1Z1, which has been an alpha for three years. So, they're, they're, at that point, it's like, no, that is the game. Yeah. And you have to buy your way in. Yeah. But with leaks, uh, that is just it's it's sh shitty on behalf of a person who does leak it. No, I you know. know yeah, they, they're getting their moment of fame, and then they're going to be forgotten about. You know, no one's going to years down the line if this game is successful. Go, oh yeah, there was that one guy who leaked it, and no one cares. Dude, yeah. One thing that one thing that pisses me off too, in terms of like betas and stuff, I got an invite for I got a, a code for the freaking closed beta yeah. for um for, for honor. Yeah, mm -hmm. guess uh, guess what happened with the code? Didn't mm -hmm. work. Did you contact the devs? I did. Didn't get a response. Really? I was oh. so pissed because it was like the day beforehand where I got the code, and I was like, "All right, sweet, gonna play for honor." And then like it started, and I was just like, "Oh, well, okay, that's cool. I guess I'm just uh, yeah, fucked in here. But all right, I, whatever." Yeah, <laughs> and and I remember, and I remember, oh, the Corgi Commander. How are you, sir? Hey, Corgi Welcome Commander. to hey, my Corgi Commander. How is the army, my good friend? <laughs> you need a writing opinion. Well, as well, uh, we can try to give you a writing opinion as we talk about our opinion of how leaks are pretty much the scum of the earth and uh, and whatnot. But yeah, no, I'm just like, um, oh god, like freaking leaks. It's. I, I think we can just come to the general consensus right now that leaks are really really just childish immature moves to try and gain five minutes of fame that's my personal yeah, opinion on it just beta responsibly yeah and then also with for honor taylor so literally the devs have not gotten back to you on anything at all no but i'm not too concerned i'm just gonna buy the game anyways because it looks absolutely amazing and i want it <laughs> i yeah. see hmm. well all right definitely you'll definitely you'll have to You'll have to you'll have to let us know about um about how that is, and whatnot. Oh, okay. I guess my beer's finished. Um, but yeah. So you guys heard it here first. Leaks are childish. Um, so don't leak shit. Don't ruin surprises because your friend might punch you in the face or forever label you as that guy or that girl. 
Oh yeah, yeah Streeter. Don't, don't take a leak. Don't take a leak. Just yeah. hold it in. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. That's bad for your prostate. Oh god. Well, they don't know that. <laughs> yeah, so if any of you guys want to take a look at the article that I have um sourced for uh for the ESO update, just What's let that? me know in the chat and I will post the link for you or I can whisper it to you, I'll whatever. Just over from the side. Um but yeah, so that's uh, that's my oh, two cents for that. Um, so who so who else has got stuff? Firebane, I think you had something lined up, oh, no, right? No, 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 no. By the all means, Taylor, go ahead. I need you to uh, just a moment. Hold on. All, all right, right, go cool. ahead, Taylor. Uh, well, one thing I'm going to talk about is uh, Battlefield One. For any of you who play the game, I personally don't. I don't like it at all. But Battlefield 1 is going to be getting a PTR, and for those who don't know what PTR stands for, it's a public test battle. And it's cool because for a game like Battlefield, which every time I have tried to play it has been nothing but buggy and problematic, a PTR is the perfect solution. Thank and God. Like, it's cool because it's it, you get to see stuff that may or may not actually be implemented in the game. So, like, it's pretty much like with Overwatch, with Diablo. You get to see what they're thinking, you know. Oh, hey, this might be good. And if it turns out to be a bad fit, well, you played something that no one else is ever going to play. So that's kind of cool. And, yeah. like, they've already sent out some codes to select Battlefield veterans and other, like, select members in the community. And it's cool because if you don't get one of those immediately, you can register through, like, the companion app. Um, but the, the key to actually getting in is you need to have the season pass. Okay. You cannot of course. be and part of the PTR without the season pass. That. I mean, that, there, that's exactly how they're going to make money. But here's the other thing about that is that, in my opinion, from what I've been hearing from a lot of people, Battlefield 1 is it's fun, no doubt about it, but they are still leaning towards for long-term playing, leaning back towards Battlefield 4 still. Yeah. Battlefield 1, it, really just any most, actually most FPS games at this point in time, in my opinion, are getting kind of too repetitive, which is why I kind of like the idea of a PTR, just because Call of Duty is just like, meh, here we go, that's it, who cares? Whereas, like, Battlefield, like, the, 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 the devs of that are actually like, you know, hey, what can we do to try to make this not shitty? Yeah, yeah they, they put a lot of challenge into it and not just... Boom, oh, you're dead. Boom, oh, you're dead. I mean, I know if you watch my stream, it's boom, oh, he's dead again. Boom, oh, he's dead again. Dude, at least you, at I least, mean, at least with your stream, you get to move around. I just kind of spawn in with no weapons or anything, and I'm like, oh, this is nice. I'm just going to run through the battlefield. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Very, very, very accurate. So, I think that's definitely a good thing, because I actually remember when, um, I think it was when patch 1.4 and, and 1.5 was coming out for the Division, they, um... I uh, I found I was looking on Steam one day and I and I saw PTS. I'm like, what the heck is PTS? I didn't sign up for that shit. And then and then I found out from Tim, oh PTS, that's public test server. So I'm like, okay, Ubisoft is actually being conscious. You know what I mean? Yeah, like PTRs are awesome, just because like they get you get the first look at the stuff. So if you're in the PTR and it does get implemented, boom, you have a leg up. But, like, even if it doesn't, you, you get to do, like, the, oh, I played this when it was, like, before a thing. And then it's like, wait, what? That was a thing? Oh, yeah, it was in the PTR, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, way to go, gamer hipster. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But it's, it's nice, too, because, like, uh, they, like, they're making it so that way, you know, you don't have, like, the rankings and everything else won't carry over. It's literally just square one. Here you go. So right. it's not like, oh, hey, this person's got everything unlocked in the game. Well, now they have everything unlocked in the PTR. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hope and so hopefully, like, ends up being like every other game, like Diablo and stuff, where it'll... Well, well Diablo, you can have multiple characters and shit. Mm -hmm. But hopefully it's uh, every time they come out with a new thing, they kind of reset the PTR for that. So it's like, let's say they're rolling out testing. Oh, let's add some new grenades to the game. That ends up being a success. They roll out, hey, let's add some new guns to the game. And they refresh the entire PTR. That way people can, like, work up to levels, get the guns, use those guns. Like, I'd love it if they would do that rather than just once the PTR comes out, 
they just, here you go, here's the PTR, you'll have these levels the entire time the PTR exists, and you'll have all this other crap. Yep. Yep. Uh, you sold it, not a big fan, huh, uh, hashtag, or was it just like it served its purpose and you were done with it? Yeah, like, like def- What's your opinion, hashtag, about how Battlefield 1 went for it? Yeah, and just to go off of that, Firebang, guys, even though even though we form our own opinions on these issues, please, 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 um... Give us your opinion on, on on a fair amount of these on fair amount of these issues as we talk about them because we want you guys we want you guys involved because because to be honest we put out a lot of this information for you guys because we care about you honestly we do and we don't want y'all playing shitty games that just ain't fun <laughs> no shitty games are wastes of money put out by dudes that are like oh these gamers are so fucking uneducated we can just easily steal their steal the money from their wallets because they're not informed <laughs> and then guess what then you get informed gamer like uh no i know how shitty your product is i'm telling the world suck it bitch yeah and then everyone still buys it just because it's a freaking a title so they're like oh okay whatever Ah, oh, Christ! That's always stupid. Um, and actually, yeah, but uh, but actually though, so um, uh, the the one thing though that I do want to touch on, because Firebane, I'd like to actually pass the mic to you, because just with regards to the story you have lined up. But after you talk, I'm just hoping if we can engage in a small discussion, actually, on a point that was brought up a couple episodes back. But Firebane, I pass the mic to you, sir. What? What? Right. Oh. Um. <laughs> yeah. I- hi. No, uh, yes. <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, yeah, you worry me there for a second. Um, so okay, I want to touch on one thing that we're going that I wanted to talk about here is we'll talk about some new gaming news that has just come out. And uh, to quote the article, and I'll be referring from an article. Basically, what the article is called is "I love the smell of Kickstarter in the morning." Hey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Yo, is- Phoenix, what's up, dude? Hey, a Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix. How you doing, man? So what is going on is there is a new Kickstarter going on, and it is already up to seven thousand dollars right off the bat. But you guys will not believe who's running this Kickstarter. Tell us. This Kickstarter is being run by Francis Ford Coppola. Wait, what? Sorry, what? I what? Know, I heard you I know, right. I Can you repeat that just one more time? This Kickstarter is being run by Francis Ford Coppola, who has hired on multiple game designers. Because he's decided that if you're going to do it, do it right, do it yourself. And he has hired on tons of game designers. He is going to be making the new video game of Apocalypse Now. Francis Ford Coppola is going to be making the video game Apocalypse Now. Yes! (laughs) This is probably the best news I've heard all week. (laughs) Even better than when I found out that I passed my test so I could actually, like, take reservations at work. Like, he's decided, he saw the gaming world out there, he really uh, looked at just how a lot of video games are now starting to take off of movies and things of that nature, but it's all being done by these various video gaming companies, and he kind of figured, you know what, I can do this. I mean, you know, we can get the people to do this. So he has taken control, and he has decided he's going to do it. And it is a huge Kickstarter. I mean, there is, I think it is roughly $900 million they're trying to raise. So, no, I, no, no, 900000 Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Damn, dude. Like, that's that an expensive a fucking game. Like, but, no, um, that's no, kind of where things are million, I didn't I expect to be, that. like, Sword Art Online kind of shit. Like, I want to dive into that. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. Really, coming from this, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, being the person who put this together, he's hiring the best game designers he can get his hands on right now to actually put this together. That's pretty much all that started. This kick started, and this is brand new news. This just came out this month um, that he's doing this, and this is going to be really fun to keep a track, keep your, excuse me, keep your eye on and keep track of. Oh, so, my God. Uh, yes, let me see. Hold on. Uh, yes, nine hundred thousand dollars is what he's trying to get. He's trying to get an immersive psychedelic horror RPG. Okay, is exactly where he's going with this. Okay, oh, guys, I need to. Beautiful. I need. I, I need to. Hold on a second. I got to make sure that I'm awake for this. Francis freaking Ford Coppola, the guy who made The Godfather, is doing Apocalypse Now the video game. Yes. Oh my God. Best the news in the night. Apocalypse Now is making the Apocalypse Now for your game. Yeah, that I yeah. love. That. I per I, I personally really 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 appreciate Francis Ford Coppola's work. Like many ma- majority of the things that he's touched has turned to gold. Oh my god. 
Well, yeah, I mean, come on, Francis Ford Coppola, like, he's good at what he does, and whatever he does, he's good at I mean, God, I've had his wine, he's great at that, too. Yeah. So, um, so that's pretty much the big news that I had right there, was to kind of let everyone know about that. What do you guys think? Oh, my God. Uh, well, uh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, yeah, just, yes, just um, all I'm of the yes. I'm going to turn out like other video games have been done by, like, famous people from the movie industry. Uh, I know, really hope stuff. it doesn't turn into another, uh, Kojima incident, like, with freaking Yeah, Del Toro. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah that, me if, too. If it turns into that, I might actually cry. Yeah, I probably will, too. I probably will as well. No, I don't want stupid commercials. Oh, God. Free music from YouTube, guys. It's great asset, but commercials. Seriously. Um, but... So, oh, God. What about you, Taylor? About me for what? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I got a couple things, but... Yeah. First, uh, I want to do a, a, a shameless plug for a game I just bought. That I streamed a little bit of. Dave was watching me do it. Also, Dave, I got better at that game. Damn it! I cleared nice. stage and, two. And here's stage the three th horseshit. Oh god! Now but, here's uh, the th here's the thing. It's called Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Here's the thing what? that I will clarify quickly for you, though, Taylor. I did not see the stream. I did not see the stream because I bought the game as well, but I didn't want to get any spoilers, so I did not watch the stream. I'm sorry to say, but I I saw the tweet that you that you had about it. Yeah. And I, I wanted to use that actually as my gem of the week. But yeah, oh my god, dude. I got this game on PS4, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. It was five bucks. Best five bucks I have ever spent. It's like a... Would you, would you say 16-bit, Dave, you think is about accurate? Around there, yeah. Around there. It's like, it's like a 16-bit platformer where you have to move your character to the beat of the music. And yeah. so enemies move to the beat of the music as well. It, uh, you attack to the beat of the music. So it's cool because the, the uh, it'll give you like a heart symbol on the bottom. Lines coming in towards the heart. You have to move when the lines are directly on the heart in order to get your multiplier up. Because there are some things where you can get like damage based on your multiplier. Um, defense based on your multiplier. And it's, it's, such, it's a fun game. Yeah. But it is, it can get really bullshit. Just yeah. because at low levels, if you're not used to it, you will die a lot. And then each, you have multiple different characters you can find. Each have their own different thing. I play as the bard character because I don't have to move around to the beat. So I can just go like blitzing around the map without having to follow the beat. Shit. And then there's a couple other characters. Like the main one goes with the beat. The, um, one of the other guys I have unlocked has unlimited bombs. That is his only attack, though. So, like, you can't just, like, use a dagger or something against someone. All you can do is drop bombs. It is the hardest person I have played as. Damn. Yeah, but Firebane, just to give you a little bit of info with this, the official description on Steam, as I remember it reading, which, by the way, Taylor, I got it off of Steam for 3 bucks seventy four. Oh, yeah, I was watching, I was actually yeah. watching Taylor play it. Yeah. It was, right. it was it was great. Yeah. yeah, I picked it up from the mid from the midweek madness sale, courtesy of that. But yeah, no, the way the official description on Steam is that it is a rhythm based RPG style uh, RPG style like old school based game. Like it's literally like cool. reminiscent of the older RPGs. Like um, mm -hmm. I think like kind of like how Zelda was starting off. Uh, Imagine Zelda plus DDR. Yes, exactly. It's Legend of Zelda plus DDR equals Crypt of the Necro's Answer. I saw answer. kind of what you were doing there. What I saw that more of was Gauntlet plus DDR was the best way I would have described what I was witnessing. Zelda was definitely one of the ones I would put in there too, but Gauntlet was that original cube-based, like square-based, you go this square, this square, this square, this square, this square. Yeah. And for those who don't know, Gauntlet back in the day was a video game, and they would say, Welcome, wizard. Or warrior, or a magician, or whatever the hell that whore was called. But it was fun! She was a whore, that's all that matters! <laughs> Welcome, whore! Oh, God. Friggin' chic. Um, but yeah, so that's been your old man rant for the night. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, definitely. I want to play Crypt of the Necrodancer. I'm going to do a Let's Play video of it sometime soon, as well as release a bunch of other videos um, on my channel, hopefully. I'm just trying to find a better free editing program, um, or I'm just going to go through my computer to see if I can work around some shit so that Shotcut doesn't really 
lock up on me too much. Um, but yeah, no, Crypt of the Necrodancer. I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Definitely going to be checking it out. And by that, I mean install it and then play it. Um, but yeah, no, so... I want to see, see if I get it, <laughs> if we can do co-op on our computers. Because I know there is a co-op mode in there. Really? I saw it when I was messing around in the uh, home area on my PlayStation. Oh, now this I got. This I gotta see. This yeah. I gotta see. Well, I want to see if that's possible because then that way we can like two man through the dungeon. Yes, yes, I I approve of this. I approve of this wholeheartedly. Um, but yeah, so guys, so I wanted to um just uh well very quickly before I say the discussion. So from cheese and tomato, it has become. Take a look at this. I would take a look at it, but the, the compared yeah, to oh yeah, that's right. Duh. <laughs> but there's like there's like a good ten second lag. Give me a second. It's popping up. It's mm -hmm. popping up. Wait for it. Up oh, there we go. Ooh. I still don't like the fact that there's tomatoes. Touching no, no, that looks beautiful right there. I'm hey, so Taylor, it's in Salata Caprese. It's supposed but, to be like that. Yeah, that that is. Beautifully put together, Dave. I, See, really, I just that's, don't that's like cool. tomato. That's why I don't like it. I know the texture is all weird. I'm <laughs> enjoying. Um, I I'm enjoying a DiGiorno Supreme Pizza. Right now. Oh, I'm right. a, and DiGiorno's. And just, it's okay because DiGiorno's is bomb. It's well, no, well, DiGiorno's is amazing. To, to quote Tim, there's pornographic material on the screen. Firebane, stop it! And then to quote Brandon, <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I still remember. Oh. <laughs> That's just oh god. <laughs> um. Anyways, though. But so, guys. So now for the um. So now, anyways, though. Just for the serious note. So I wanted to initiate a discussion on something that we actually mentioned back in um uh, episode seven. We mentioned this back in episode seven, and um is and uh, basically and the discussion I want to initiate is on the topic of alpha and beta testing because. Um, to bring back a, a point that you mentioned, Firebane, was that you mentioned that a lot of companies seem to be shooting themselves in the foot with alpha and beta testing, where the contesting point brought up not just by myself, but I, uh, but also uh, uh, Shibo, which is Brandon, by the way. Um, I have to focus so hard on you for when your mic cuts in and out. Like it's I so don't remember, they oh don't hear that. God. Only you and I have that. Point. Exactly. That's why I'm like, mm, okay, I got to focus on this. Okay. There's your so... Oh my God! Stop it, commercials. But that's okay. Jeez. What what was going on with alpha and beta testing, or what were you going to say about that? Well, the discussion I wanted to initiate in regards to the topic was basically this. Um, just because if you guys if you guys haven't really heard, and granted, this isn't one of my official stories, but recently, um, there was news put out that that Microsoft recently canceled um all publication efforts with Scalebound, and um and this was what? A, yeah, Microsoft out of the blue canceled Scalebound. Yeah, they just out of the blue canceled Scalebound, stopped all publication efforts whatsoever, and they didn't seem to give the reason why. It was very shady. That's that's super weird. That game, like that, looked like it was gonna be so cool. Yeah, I know, right? And a lot of people thought so, and a lot of people got outraged about it. Angry Joe actually published a whole rant about it. Um, but but I digress though. So, um, it's just because when we mentioned um scalebound and we were talking about um and i mentioned like you know it seems weird that they're not doing like any kind of public alpha or beta testing and then firebane you brought up the point about how you felt that some companies were shooting themselves in the foot well here's the thing that i wanted mm -hmm. to just put up for open discussion with you guys um with alpha and beta testing because on the one hand there is a point where you can do too much where there's a point when a lot of companies could probably shoot themselves in the foot with alpha yeah. and beta testing then um Oh yeah, Snuggles, that was one of the things that I found, that there were creative issues between the developer and Microsoft and how they were working. Um, but so yeah, so there's times when you can do too much and you shoot yourselves in the foot. But then there are other times when it's needed because people can hype train and for the example of No Man's Sky, people can hype train and then the game could just completely be a flop. So now here's every the... time I hear No Man's Sky, a piece of me dies inside. Dude, how do you think I feel? I comped you 30 bucks for the game. I bought the game for you. I know. Oh. Yeah. Um but yeah, so the thing that I um so the thing that I wanted to bring up was just because, you know, with trying to decide quality tests, like what would you guys feel in your minds is acceptable amounts of alpha and beta testing or even just with like with certain um scenarios like with like does it belong with certain games or um should it be, should it go to all games? 
You know, is it something that should be blanket, or is it really only a select few that deserve alpha or beta testing? Well, one of the hard parts about that, I don't think that, let me rephrase this. I don't think it should be open beta testing. I think this should be for people Amen. who have bought the game, have the game. However, I think there should be disclosures you cannot broadcast this just yet. I think this is going to help the companies overall because I think a lot of what's happening is, is people are playing the game before the game actually comes out. Mm -hmm. Primarily what most of these companies are going to wind up making their money on if they do these open free betas or open free alphas is people are going to say, well, I've already played the game. Therefore, these companies aren't going to make the money that they can. And they're primarily stout selling to the console crowds, which don't get access to these things. Okay. Um, one of the big things that I think needs to happen is, number one, utilize your conventions to okay. test out crowd response. Now, as for crowd response, as for beta testing, alpha testing, make sure things are fine. Make it closed betas for people who have pre-purchased the game or put in pre-purchases. I don't have a problem with that, but it's when it gets broadcast everywhere, that's where you start losing all the fun for anyone who might be interested. Now, admittedly, as the consumer, you have the right not to go on Twitch. Please don't do that. I really need your business. So, um, but in reality, um, it, it's one of those things where all the reviews are coming out and you're getting the opinions of a lot of different people who are throwing it out there who are spoiling stuff, spoiling how it ends or how it goes or what's going on. And to me as a consumer, I kind of like that surprise of figuring it out for myself of making up my own opinion and really getting a chance to. And also as a broadcaster here on Twitch, if certain people are able to get closed beta and not others, well, this is now bleeding to their success and now it's not an even starting starting run from here as to the race to see who gets the more followers for that game. Yeah. Admittedly, some people bring their own followers with them. There's no doubt about that. And I understand from a business standpoint of the actual company, uh, of the developers and the designers, that this is going to help them sell games and get stuff out there. Some people are going to want it when it comes out. If all of a sudden the betas are done and close and they're like, oh, wait, I didn't get a chance to, that's the person who's going to buy. But there's a lot of people who won't because like, eh, I've seen it. Yeah. See, I, I definitely agree with you, but kind of piggybacking off what you said, about the uh, not streaming for I think the one the one genre really of games that kind of would be the exception to that rule is an MMO just because they're pretty much boundless games so I feel like in order to, especially like with some games that kind of like Black Desert Online um, fuck what was the other one uh, uh, ESO? One that I, n not ESO well ESO as well but uh, Blade and Soul that's it um, when I was in the closed betas for all of those, I streamed each one, and it wasn't mainly me talking more about the story, it was talking about, you know, artwork, um, what the combat was like, it was more about all the mechanics of the game, which is really what it should be, you shouldn't be, like, trying to blitz the story just to get the story done, you should try to focus on, like, the nitty gritty and uh, be like, oh, well, here are some things that the combat is lacking, but the visuals are actually doing for good but then in terms of stuff like game like example like with games that come out um on pc con and consoles you really shouldn't like have all the open stuff because then everyone and their mother is going to stream it and especially for closed stuff you really need to have those uh ndas that way people don't just stream the hell out of it and then ruin the whole plot yeah like, closed alphas i think are necessary for all games just because you need a test of some sort. You need like a consumer test, which is why you have those closed alphas. But I think after that, closed betas, some, I feel like uh, for the closed betas, you should invite a couple other consumers, but a lot of people who were in the closed alpha, especially if they had provided good input and stuff like that uh, to help like fix the game and get it to that beta state, should be reinvited in order to like, you know, kind of give that same process so that way they can see, you know, what they um, brought to the table for, like, you know, hey, this might be a problem, and see if that got worked on, if it did, what exactly happened to where it was now to the point of where it is. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, and I also hashtag does have a good point about FPSs would be good if you're not reviewing storylines on those. You know, some of those can be true. Um, yep. I admit I am notorious for never touching the storyline aspect for Battlefields. Like, I, I play it just for the multiplayer. And I should go back and play the storylines. I hear it. They're fantastic. 
Yeah, that's kind of like with um, Battleborn, Overwatch, stuff like those. That it's basically just almost a pu- it's a purely multiplayer arena stuff like right. that. That's totally fine because it's literally nothing but mechanics. Yeah. Like there's nothing to spoil. Yeah, and and now the and because the other interesting point that I did that I do want to bring up, especially with regards to Alpha Beta, is and and I know I bring this game up a lot, but uh, Ghost in the Shell Online. Ever since it's been released, I have always still seen it advertised as open beta. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, how long do they plan on keeping this beta going? Because it's like, it's like ever since the game came out, which was at least, uh, like what, like a couple years ago, I think? At least maybe, uh... I think it was about a year ago when I gave you that code. It was when I went to PAX, which was last year. That's right, oh, yes. Sorry, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so it was a year ago, but it's been at least a year now, and the game is still labeled as being in open beta. And it makes me wonder, you know, is this beta test really ever going to end? Because yes, you can still improve a game, but like, are they really looking for the finished product? Or are they going, or are they, or is this game like really just going to be constantly evolving and constantly in beta? You know? I mean, it's kind of like with, um, what's that game? It's got King of the Kill, stuff like that. H1Z1. Yeah, hasn't H1Z1 oh. been in a friggin' beta or alpha? Yeah, from, and from okay, all right, so now you're going to start me on my next rant. So, um, <laughs> yes, it has. Um, it has been going like that, and they've been doing nothing but updates, and they've been doing nothing but making it worse and worse and worse. Hmm. About a year and a half ago, they should have stopped with their updates. I'd say about a year ago. They should have stopped with their updates because honestly, they have made it to the point now for a game that's still not out of alpha or beta. Um, it, it has now lost, it's losing its following. All the major streamers who did play it are not playing it as much or have stopped playing it as much. And they are now out there looking for other avenues because of the fact that it has become so intensive, even on the big time streamer, big time streamers you know, um, are having trouble with their high-end machines because this game is too much to stream and game it. You know, I can game the game, absolutely, without a doubt, but can I stream and game the game? No. Um, It comes across in the show as being really laggy, really bad, and I'm not the only one that has this problem. Like, at first I thought, okay, it's because of my computer. Well, it turns out people with big machines are having this problem too. So I think that Daybreak has really they have shot themselves in the foot in a big way. They really had a lot of hype. They were doing great. It is a, I will say it's, it's an amazing game. The biggest problem is they just like, haven't done enough with it. And they like, just keep considering it as a beta. Even though like, if they kind of like, went a little further with it, they could output it as a full game. Yeah. And just, it would basically just be like, a multiplayer arena pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. And especially because, um, with like, I remember when, um, with one, I think when we were talking about this, I can't remember it was on, I think it was episode seven when Firebay, when you mentioned, uh, players unknown battle Royale, um, oh, yeah. all the, um, all of the, uh, all of the big major H1 Z1 streamers have been going to, um, they've been going to was, battle uh, Royale. It was still open beta. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Big and, time. And, and that's one thing that I think is really, um, I think that's one thing that is really, really hurting um, a game like H1Z1, which is, you know, you'd expect a game like that to really have like a loyal following. But truth be told, if you keep putting in updates that are just going to make the game worse and worse and worse and not focus on the problems, you may as well just like, you may as well just like take all of your followers, put them in a box, wrap it up in a nice neat little bow and plop it on Battle Royale's doorstep and say, here you go. Kiss goodbye. Like literally, that's all they're do- that's all they're doing, and frankly, it just it's like it surprises me just how how the company is actually running this whole thing. It's it's really just amazing. It boggles the mind. Um, what does the audience think out there? Yeah, guys, what do you guys think about how H1Z1's kind of doing with their whole thing, and at least with the open beta? I know that Phoenix mentioned the fact that Warframe is still classified as being an open beta for almost four years now, which is crazy because I I almost half expect that game to be like finished at least by now it's really really weird you know it's 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 nuts agreed 
and, and like, so I, I, I literally like it boggles my mind how a game can stay in beta and hell even some games alpha for such a crazy long time yeah and then just like they just drop off the face of the map it basically tells me that that the company that came up the, the production company that came with that game yeah I agree also. is not they, they, they literally can't be trusted because it makes you just look at it and go oh hey it's one of those games that just tries to get you to pay for literally crap and then yeah. buy a bunch of other crap yeah, just, what's going Ooh. on th- what's going on there rotoplex welcome to the show welcome to the is welcome to the round table where we're currently discussing how ever how the company is doing a really good job at fucking up h1z1 and talking about alpha beta testing and how much of it is really needed and actually which brings me up to the one point that i actually uh, really want to cover uh really want to cover guys and i want to ask you this so for alpha beta testing yes you can shoot yourself in the foot with it but on the other hand it's also a valuable tool but now here's the thing yes it is but now here's the thing um with based on what we've talked about do we definitely see this as something that should only be thank you phoenix for the host um Woo! Yeah, thanks, Phoenix. So, Thank you, homie G. So, just with uh, general consensus right now, um, where would you guys lean more towards? That it's something that should only be for select few games, or something that should be um, a blanket requirement? It's one of those things that I don't think that we're going to have a lot of say over. Game companies aren't going to use beta because it's free outsourcing to basically figure out what the hell their problems are. They get to use a per not only is it free, but they're charging people for the games and then saying, here, now you get access to beta. Yeah. When the pro- finished product is never really coming out, but they've already charged you for it. They've got the game. I feel lucky that I got H1Z1 when it was just H1Z1. You had King of the Kill mode and just Survivor mode, but it wasn't two separate games. And then when it split, I got to still keep both separate games. But now, anybody who wants to have either game has to buy both. Yeah. Now, that's the big thing. As a consumer, they're going to keep buying. They are not going to stop that, and they're going to buy early so they can have access to it. So they are not only are they giving them the money, but I feel that they are giving them the money with the anticipation that they're going to get free tech service out of it, basically, to report, report any problems that are found. Yeah. I found. Think, I think a good way to sum it up is they're getting robbed with a smile. Yeah, definitely. It's... Yes. It's the bigger the smile, the sharper the knife. Yeah. In this case, like so, there have there have been some games, even for um, on the phone that I've played, where I put a, mo- a bunch of money into them, and like because they're like, oh sweet, this is I'm like this is a great game. It's got blah 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 blah, and then just suddenly out of nowhere, poof, gone. Yeah. What what the hell? And I mean, and I, I got robbed. I, I was smiling while I was getting robbed the entire time. Didn't even know it. Yeah, which is what really stinks because you know, because 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 alpha and beta testing can be such a valuable tool because you know you're allowing the consumer to test the product and you're telling the company what's wrong, what needs to be fixed, and what they're doing right. And now there, and then now it's just becoming a marketing tool that's either going to ruin the game for a lot of people. Or that's just going to keep on languishing, like, like just their time and their, uh, I don't know. It's it's a, it's it's just going to end up becoming like a wait uh, a waste of time. People are going to wonder like, what the hell's the point? You know? Agreed. It 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 really stinks. So I know that this is one debate that will take like at least who knows how many years in a day to be able to really figure out the answer for. But so definitely, you guys. Um, if you get the chance, like uh, put this, this uh, definitely give us your opinions on, on on alpha and beta testing. And hell, you can even put it up on our Twitter. You can follow us at gamers underscore and underscore mead. Um, you can follow Firebane um, at jtophat, or you can follow myself at Dave the Nut One. But yeah, if you got any like additional opinions on any of the stuff that we've talked about, please feel free to feel feel free to tag us in a topic at all and use the hashtag GNM Talk. Um, actually, Taylor, because you have the chat up right now, I feel like you'd be in the better position to put that one up more than me. Um, oh, starting Snuggles here. I mean, Darkest Dungeon was a good open beta. It was a complete game at release, and the beta testing helped iron out some of the kinks. This is true, but the thing that I would bring up Snuggles would just be the controversy over the Antiquarian patch. Like, one of our members, a guy by the, uh, uh, Timmy Boy, a guy by the name of Silent Sir, um, so basically, he got 
Darkest Dungeon, loved the game, got invested over 225 hours into it. Then when Red Hook Studios released the Antiquarian patch, he became among the 5% of people that could not play the game no matter what he tried to do. Um, like uninstall, reinstall, hard reset, whatever. And and basically, according to what he told us, Red Hook Studios basically said to the 5% of players, screw you. Because they did about six hot fixes for that patch, and he felt that they did not properly test it. He crucified them on Steam. I mean, like, like Dude, brought like I I read that I read that, and it was scathing, dude. Like he he, he made sure he ripped them from poo hole to goo hole on that one. Oh God, yeah. It's like he literally just <laughs> he, he, it's like he knocked them out, brought them to Golgotha, put it like put them on put them on like the full King of Kings show and everything. Like, that, I'm talking, like, full-on crucifixion right there. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the game had its ups and downs. Like, for me, the game was just... It, it got to the point of after two hours being just so repetitive. Mm. Yeah. Which is a damn shame because it does look like a nice twist on the RPG. Like a psychological like psychological focus as opposed to just, you know, go to this dungeon and do this, that, and the other thing. Um, yeah. Wow. I think we... Wow, we took a good chunk of time talking about about Alpha yeah, Beta. Okay. Very, hey, I mean, it's an important topic. <laughs> it is a very important topic. Oh, God. All stop. <laughs> Hashtag pull the cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh a statement my... I never need to hear again. Yeah. <laughs> it's a statement that's gonna be heard, alright? <laughs> Remember, folks, wipe front to back. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no. Oh, God. So, Taylor, do you have anything lined, uh, do you have anything else lined up good, sir? Uh, yes, I do have a couple things. Alright, shoot, fire First, away. I'm gonna talk about the fact that somehow... It's only just happening, but Fallout 4 is getting a high-res uh, patch for PC. Okay. Don't oh, know. It's only just happening because PC Master Race. Granted, console player, I know. We're really yeah. the only people that matter, I mean, if you think about the game in the world. Oh, That's the contest. all the money comes from. We don't have Steam on PlayStation. I'm just saying. <laughs> But it's it. Some of the the specs it wants is actually kind of crazy. I've got it here, and it's cool because like n almost no one I know who has a computer can run it. You need at least Windows 7 64-bit OS. You need an i7 5820K or better for your Ooh. processor. <laughs> oh, I'm, I haven't even started. Why they are not stuff. toying around? You need a GTX 1080 8 gig or a Radon RX 490 8 gig. And you need an additional eight gigs or higher of RAM. Wow! So Not what only we... is this an HD patch? This shit is like blowing off HD. Like, like it, it is literally is overhauling. Patch. Like it's getting into the 4K region. It's it is a pretty much an entire Fallout overhaul. Like it is crazy. What's up, guy Stoppel? Yeah, what's up, guy Stoppel? What's going on? Welcome Hi, to the guy stream, Stoppel. dude. I mean, and yeah, no, really, every company is becoming Nintendo, but I mean, it's cool just because um, it's coming out that you can just download it. You don't need anything else special. They probably just decided, hey, with all this 4K stuff coming out, we might as well just pump out a 4K patch for a game that's already out. Like, holy like, Christ. You know, it, it's, it's buying time. It's kind of like how Skyrim between, you know, I mean, well, it's kind of like how Elder Scrolls between Skyrim and the still in the works... Uh, the new Elder Scrolls game re-released Skyrim for new console. Jesus, yeah. I mean, it's crazy these kind of overhauls that they're doing. Is it like, is do you think this guy's, like, like? let me ask you this, guys. Do you think this might be a response to, like, the 4K market suddenly just really blowing up? That's what I'm thinking, <laughs> just because it is not only a ridiculous patch, it is insane, just because the specs needed on that, most people's computers are just kind of yeah, they're screwed. It's like they're cutting down at least maybe twenty yeah, percent of their that. customer base. Dude, even with my computer, I've got twelve gigs of RAM. I've got an i7 that can go ahead, go ahead and do that. My graphics card is only an 860M. Nah. <laughs> yeah, mine's yeah, a GTX yeah, 960. Yeah, kill people. And the I mean, Bravo. Bravo to these game companies who are coming out with these 
more beautiful and beautiful games and really the high resolution graphics but god damn it you guys are killing us financially like seriously I mean, every time a new game comes out we have to go buy a new video card and then sometimes What's we have to buy new Alice processor to support that or more gram to be able to support that i mean jesus people yeah but I at mean, the same time thank you they're pretty I mean, we really enjoy that part. Oh, God, we Sergeant... Just don't enjoy the bill that comes with having to play your game. I know, right, but no, sorry. I just had to read this from Sergeant Snuggles. Skyrim HD yeah, is like just Skyrim. as buggy. Now I can watch dogs fly into space. That's right. Yeah, but no, yeah. seriously, game companies. I am a grad student. This, The majority of this wallet right here is business cards, okay? Business cards. I don't have squat to my name right now that I can spend on games Willy freaking nilly. Dave, it's cool. Just become an exotic dancer. I'm telling you, call Dave, yourself you the Italian working, stallion. Oh start god! Look in that pole, man. You're gonna be rich as hell. So, <laughs> oh, I mean, come on, guys. Who here would throw a dollar at Dave if he got on the pole? <laughs> I throw a dollar in pennies. I'd make it hail. Oh Jesus! You guys know who I am, Ali from Cairo. No, I no, do not know. Muhammad Ali. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah David the Italian. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Taylor. Taylor, um, by the way, because of that whole debacle that happened that that stream, I decided to change my name of the car from the Italian Stallion to E Ferrari's Pizza, so this way we wouldn't have to hear Brandon Brandon cringe in the background. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Brandon cringing in the background is kind of a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're right. Um, it isn't enough to justify the cost because there isn't enough difference to really do that. Until the game developers start coming out with something that's going to be mind-blowing, I don't want to justify the cost on the new... Well, I have to anyway, because I have a 650M. But at the same time, it's one of those... There hasn't been a game that has stepped it up to stepped up to the plate in a while that is mind-blowingly beautiful. Yeah. That has made it to the point where it's like, we have got to go buy a whole new computer just for this. We don't need it. We just bought one. I don't give a shit. It's this game. But we don't have one of those. Not in a while. We really haven't. Yeah. I mean... Dude, like, I, 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 think, I think one of the first games we're gonna see that is gonna actually... Pro hopefully. Hopefully. I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. That's gonna be good with really high res and beautiful graphics is Horizon Zero Dawn. I just saw more gameplay trailers for it, and oh, drool. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good one, and I think Star Citizen's a really good one. The other Dude, one, the other Tim one. Tim cannot stop talking about Star Citizen, and what is it? Detroit Become Human. Yeah, Detroit Become Human. Oh, oh those two look one. magical. No, yeah, and actually, the other thing too that's getting a lot of hype for really upgraded graphics is um, uh, Zelda, Bra uh, Zelda Brave New Wild. I think it's called. The, new, the newest Legend of Zelda game, and guys, so, uh, what I want to see is innovation of gameplay. We have been getting the same old. This is this is true. I can definitely agree with that, guys. Stop all. I mean, me personally, I'm very much one of those believers in if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you know, it's good. It's a good idea to change up your tactics just a little bit, you know. Because I mean, yeah, yeah. we got to start from somewhere, but you know, variety, variety is key. And yeah, uh, yeah, hashtag. Um, to hashtag I am watching Prey. I think Prey is going to be a really beautiful game. I've been watching the trailers very carefully, um, mostly through their Facebook page, but it does look like that'll be really nice to watch too. Or to game. Dude, oh, now here, speaking of new and innovative, different direction to things. Oh, if you don't mind, Taylor. No, no, go for it. Oh, I'm going to use this to jump over to the other story that I had. <laughs> um, one that I found, and admittedly, this is like a year old from when IGN came out with this, but I just discovered it, so damn it, it's important and relevant. But um, I play horror games, as you guys know on my show quite often uh, now, and I really have been enjoying them a lot. And the one, because I've been trying to go through and find something new to play. I'm trying to find something, all right, I need to find something good that's really going to scare me or something like that. I don't know when this is going to come out, but they have just uh, officially said that it's going to be on PS4 plus PC. That was the latest announcement that just came out. But the game I'm looking forward to is a game called Perception. Mm. This is a horror game taking on a whole new approach. Now, is it VR? 
Uh, they, I have a feeling they're going to do something with VR with it. They might have that possibility. But the new approach is this. Number one, the they've gotten a bunch of gamers from other companies that have basically left with some companies shutting down, including one of the developers from Bioshock is behind this. Mm. Um, and what this is, is the approach is going to be that you play a blind person. And it's using echolocation. Every time that the cane taps, you get almost like a daredevil blue type outline of everything. Like a around. sonar, like a sonar or, wave. Shit. I yeah. Did, so did you go into that. a haunted house, and it's got this sort of a bluish gray coloring scheme going on with black. And you want to use the cane for noise, but you don't want to be too loud because that'll summit bring one of the ghosts oh, in towards yeah. you. Ali from Cairo. Thank you for the follow. This looks like. Hey, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, follow. Ali from Cairo. Woo! Thanks, Ali from Pete. Cairo. Thanks a lot, man. Um, this is a game that looks like it's going to be so exciting, and I can't wait because you guys know I scream like a little bitch. And, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be so much fun to really play a game where you are going, where a lot of it is going to be in the dark. You know, you're not going to see everything around you like you usually do in a game. It's a lot of tap. Oh, shit, that wasn't there a second ago tap wait what the hell is that or like the, all of a sudden I, I saw like a grandfather clock ding and all of a sudden everything is illuminated oh christ and this is gonna be a new take on a game that i think uh, even if it did require a new video card i'd be willing to invest on that yeah i saw one facebook video on that game yesterday i didn't even like notice the title but as soon as you were like oh it's like echolocation i was like oh i know what he's talking oh, about this game, this game sick, is sick dude gorgeous. yeah it's it's dank sauce it is dank sauce um and actually oh firebank high hopes for it yeah oh and firebank just a very 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 quick blurb just with with horror games and 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 whatnot but oh, yeah. um just very quick blurb with um because I remembered when I watched you stream a couple, uh, some time ago, I watched you stream Slender the Arrival, which is the latest in Slender game. Full Metal, hey, what up? is good, guy? What is good, guy? How hey, you doing? What's up, Full Metal? Hey, Full Metal State, how you doing, buddy? What's going on, man? Um, Focus. but yeah, Focus. no, the um, but no, when I watched you stream uh, um, uh, Slender the Arrival, the latest Slender, Slender the game. Arrival. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, do you remember when you were up in the attic and you found all the um, and you found all the other various uh, diary posts, and one of them was like this drawing that had this weird word in German. Uh, Verzweiflung? Uh, yeah, yeah, not to give anything away from the game, but yes. No, yeah, I looked it up. Um, the thing is, I thought it was Verzweiflung with a B, but it's actually Verzweiflung uh, with a V, and it's the German word for despair. Oh, see? And that's fantastic right there. What a great way to play a horror game is with despair. Yeah, right? Um, and, oh, and speaking of that, so if you guys don't mind my shameless plug, tomorrow night I'm going to be playing a new horror game. That's hey. right. <laughs> yes, it's time to scare the shit out of ourselves some more. Pardon my language to anybody who happens to be under 18. Um, we're going to be playing Among the Sleep, which oh, I can't God. wait to play this game because you play a toddler. I mean, what sort of screwed up horror game where you play a little kid? Like, so Jesus. I really can't wait to see what we can do to this kid. That doesn't sound right. Let me rethink that statement. Oh, I God. really can't wait to see what happens to this kid. No, that doesn't sound right. You will. This you is going to be like some it, fucked up man. shit, man. I'm just saying. This you, is oh, really. I can't man. wait. I played a little bit of it when I had it as a torrent on my computer. You will. Enjoy it, and also oh, maybe man. pee yourself a little. I don't you know. Maybe you will. Just a little you bit. know you will, too, just to watch this. Oh, God. Like, Jesus. This, what, that's... Time, what time are you starting it? Uh, usually, I'll be starting my games. Actually, that one probably gets started sometime between 6 and 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. Okay, 7 o'clock. So I'm going to be out of work. All right. All awesome. right. So, so, yeah, it'll be between 6 and 7 uh, uh, stand Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, hold on, wait. Firewife, is that an okay time? Between 6 and 7 tomorrow night to start my stream, yeah? Yeah, so it sounds great. Is Firewife <laughs> going to join you in the streaming process? No, Firewife will be with me on Valentine's Day on camera. Aww. But no, not, uh, not, she'll be there to laugh at me while I'm screaming like a little girl and telling me to shut up because I'll wake the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so you guys heard it first. You guys heard it here first. 6 to 7 o'clock Pacific, in between 6 and 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, come watch Firebane scare himself shitless. Um, so for all us East, for all you East Coasters here in the chat room, I that's going to be at around in between. Um, that's going to be in between nine, ten o'clock Eastern, and uh, 
This end, uh, I can't... And then I think, like, five hours ahead of that, that would be... Oh, God. I can't remember the conversion for uh, Grand Meridian. But, yeah, no. So, so in between 6 and 7, Pacific Standard Time, you can just look it up on Google. There's a time converter and all that fun stuff. But, yeah, go ahead. Check Basically, it out. Basically, if you're on East Coast, add three hours to whatever he said. Exactly, so yeah. So, instead of 6, it's 9. <laughs> and instead of 7, it's 10. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, my God. But, yeah, no. It's, watching... Watching you scare yourself shitless, Firebane, was a treat. It was definitely a treat. Hurts. Make make sure you're wearing a diaper tomorrow. Get in character. <laughs> Get into character. Oh, wait, I don't need a diaper, damn it. Bring a pinky, uh, a milk bottle, and a rattle. That way when you get scared, you can just shake the rattle violently. <laughs> rattle violently? What sort of sick, perverted fantasy do you got going on, Taylor? Yeah, Taylor was like, um... And apparently, and apparently, Taylor, you cannot. <laughs> apparently, yeah, you can't go. Here, damn it! Apparently, you can't go thirty seconds out of the sixty-nine joke. <laughs> I mean, I really can't, Pete, dude. Like, come on. Yeah, dude, he's ten rack Taylor the terrible. All right. So, all right. Does anyone have any um, notes? I actually have. Uh, I actually have a very interesting story. I think you guys might like to hear. So, I'm not sure. Well, so that's pretty much it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Like, yeah, 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 Okay. Right, so, go ahead. Anyways, what are you gonna say? So I picked up this rather interesting story when I was surfing on the web. Did you guys know that Fallout Three had two versions of it that were never released? No. Yeah, it's a thing. Fallout Three had two versions of it that were never, ever released. They were canceled projects. So, oh. yeah, apparently, um, the way that the projects worked out was just that um, in the development in between, like, um, in the, like, when, like, just when, uh, when Bethesda was going, like, from 2D to, is, my, what do you mean my fanfic doesn't count? What fanfic are you even referencing? I don't write fanfic. Dave. Dave, do you want me to just tell you who Ali oh. from Car Cairo is? Wait a minute, is it Pete? That's why I said Pete twice already. That's right, you did, and I'm just We're talking on Facebook about how you just kind of didn't even notice twice. <laughs> oh, my... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> is this the part where I go sit in the corner? Maybe. Oh, I Christ. Know. Firebane, does he, does he go sit in the corner at this part? Oh, I already put him there. <laughs> Wait, what? No one puts baby in the corner, damn it. Until tomorrow, <laughs> then you get put in the corner by a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but yeah, oh no. Oh my god, oh yeah. Right. But yeah, no, anyways though, so... Apparently, there was two versions of Fallout that, that were cancelled projects, um, never produced, and essentially, um, uh, Oscar Deus, who wrote the article that I'm referencing in particular, uh, got to sit down with, uh, Fergus Urquhart. Uh, no, Ur uh, sorry, I'm gonna be butchering this guy's name. It's, uh, Fergus Urquhart. It's, like, his name is, his last name is spelled U-R-Q-U-H-R-T. Urquhart. Um, but yeah, no, so, essentially, um, but, uh, but this guy, Fergus Urquhart, um, talked with with GameSpot about the two canceled projects that that ended up that ended up being canceled. They were originally two versions of Fallout 3 and apparently like one project became a game called Icewind Date. Never heard of that game before at all. Apparently like have you guys ever heard of that Icewind Date? No. No, it sounds like my Never ex. once. <laughs> yeah. No, but basically the way it worked was just that they were canceled projects when they were trying to, um, they were trying to move into 3D and they were trying to basically, 
apparently what these two projects were was that they were just it was when um was when the fallout team basically was like okay we got a we had a 2d engine for the moment let's try to move to the 3d engine and try to see if we can get adapted to some of the new 3d technologies and then they and then when they were moving forward um it was basically literally they were just it was just trial and error these two projects were literally um trial and error so so I mean I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't realize that Fallout 3 had these two versions. Granted they may have been like completely experimental when Bethesda was doing its tr its like um its transference into 3D. Um Icewind Dale. Oh, then then that's probably what then that's probably what it was and I must have miscopied it in my notes. Uh cool. Yeah, no, that's what it was. It was Icewind Dale. Icewind Dale, D A L E. Yeah. So essentially, um, that I, I thought that was kind of interesting. The fact that is the fact that Fallout had these two versions that we've never heard of, even even if even if they were just experimental versions. You know, hearing these little blurbs, you know, it's it's quite interesting to say the least. That's just me though. What do you guys think? All right. I mean, it, like that's kind of cool. At the same time, yeah. like. You could definitely consider them the alpha and the beta version, and then Fallout was here's completed product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Like, it's like, and the thing is too, they actually gave the um, they actually gave the project uh, um, some interesting code names. One of them, uh, the the project that eventually the code name for it that became uh, Icewind Dale was known as Project Van Buren. Apparently, is and I'm oh. just I'm, I'm just trying to think like. Van Buren. Which one? Which one would they be talking about? <laughs> we don't talk about Duke Nuge. <laughs> you might want to. You might want to check your spelling there, Snows. But no, yeah, that's true. That's true. We don't talk about Duke Nukem. <laughs> but yeah, we, we we don't talk about Duke Nukem. No, that was no, that was don't. no. That, that, that's that was the game that didn't actually movie. happen. We, we just sort of ignored that. It was, yeah. Was it like Highlander Two? I think it was. It never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah, are yeah, black market. Just doesn't exist. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, but no, I th I thought that was pretty cool. Like I I didn't real I didn't realize that these that these that what that whatever these projects turn into that they came out uh, from versions of Fallout Three. So okay. Now I know, I know that was a bit of a uh, bit of an uninteresting blurb, but I mean I thought it was cool. I thought it was personally really cool. And if you guys want to see the links at all, just hit us up in chat, and we will post the links to chat um, for your reading and viewing pleasure. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to pass the mic off to somebody who's uh, who's got something. Taylor, you said you had something in the chamber that you needed to get out. I That's right. I that you're referring to an actual story and not you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, my. Well, I mean, I wasn't... I, I was going to... Okay, you made the joke. That's cool. I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, what I had in mind was that if anyone knew about this in the past, how Valve kind of well, took a look at, you know, CSGO gambling sites a few years ago, they are now taking a crack at Team Fortress 2 skin gambling sites. Jeez, and that's real. And see, that really surprises me. That really surprises me, and at the same time, it doesn't. I mean, there's... Sorry, no, continue, Firebane. No, no, Taylor. No, 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 you go. I was just telling Mom something. Well, I know that there has been a lot of profit made off of skin making. I mean, and, uh, it, you know, that there's one, what was it? There's that one girl, I think it was, who made that one hat, and I don't remember what the hat is, who literally made thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. Like, she made her bench. She got her fortune by a skin in a game. Jeez. Ben, ben, Gabe, ben Gabe knows about that and loves it. He was so excited to talk about that when he was on The Nerdist. Um, but yes, I could see how something where you can make profit off of a digital item, they're going to have to eventually watch be careful of the gambling. It happened with Second Life when they had actual gambling places and casinos in Second Life because the currency in, in Second Life can be purchased with real money and vice versa, sold back. Well, the actual the gaming commission had to come in and step in and actually regulate the uh, gambling that was going on in that game. I, I only played that game for a short while, and I won't talk about what my character looked like. So there. 
I got but yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. Just because even in CSGO, there's still like a good amount of sites and everywhere that use like this uh, people's Steam names for just like the commercial use. So yeah. it's like, oh, hey, uh, like it's 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 definitely, I think, a good thing and a bad thing. Just because I know Pete, for example, not my fucking hats. Don't you come for my hats. Uh, <laughs> like, I think for, like, people who have, like, a lot of, like, the cool stuff and everything, even if like, they've won it from the gambling sites and stuff like that, like, it's a downside for them just because they won't be able to do it. But at the same time, it's a plus side just because... I don't know why people even bother just because it's fucking hats and it's always confused me as to why people actually care. Um, but, like, if you're all, like, the new players, like, y you don't have all those hats and if you're not that good, then you really can't do anything on those gambling yeah, lines. The, the, the so, hats, like, the it's hats not are... really a bad thing for them. Yeah, no, the... <laughs> well, Firebane, uh, Firebane's definitely, uh, uh definitely hey. showing off how his hat is. Hats matter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, you know, the, the TF2, I don't think, has a, a badass top hat. That's... Oh, no, it does. Well, badass is is the key word here. It's got top no, no, it's hat. Got, no, it's got a top hat with an eyeball coming out of it, and that's for the Halloween edition. And I remember, I've got that top hat. Ooh. That sounds like a meh top hat. That is not a meh top hat. I, lo I wear that in the game. Well, Don't you knock my top hat, damn it! Well, no, oh, I will. I will, I will knock awesome. all top hats. Well, no, I'm not really a big TF2 fan, so come well, at me, homie. Yeah, but no, Firebane. Here's the thing: he's 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 definitely referring that your top hat is the is the benchmark. So, well, thank you. Well, yeah. So basically, Valve has to step up its game and and get the level of badassness of their top hats into like they got to meet your top hat, your top hat's level of badassness. Um. Now, that being said, uh, referring to the games that I play, if you don't mind me transitioning again. Uh, Go ahead. And I've got one that this is going to give... <sighs> it's time for me to transition into the old man again! Oh, God! Yay! Old see, man Fireman! Back in my day, we had really cool games like Mario Brothers, and we had Zelda, and Pixels, and Zelda? shit like that! Well, we also had a game called Mist. Yeah. It was a game yes. where you could spend the first ten feet of that game stuck there for three days. But to let you all know, for those who want to experience what it was like to be a gamer way back in the day when I was just a wee little whippersnapper, <laughs> it Mist is officially being released for Android phones, costing six dollars and ninety-nine cents. Wow. Yeah. $6.99. <laughs> oh, damn it, Taylor. <laughs> That's right. $6.99. <laughs> but wait, if there's two nines, hmm. Oh, God. I love my mom and so can you for only man 95 <laughs> I'm an right, old so. man gamer. <laughs> damn it, I so still got it funny. where it counts. <laughs> I still remember that. I, I actually... <laughs> Taylor, I don't think I told you this. I, t I was talking to Tim one day, and I'm and I was reminiscing over episode five, and you're, I was just you're like reminiscing over ha having someone love your mom for nine ninety five. No, I was reminiscing over episode five when when Firebane launched launched some of his best old man catchphrases ever. I'm like, I gotta turn that into a T-shirt, particularly when you, particularly Firebane when you went, your mom and your grandma was my bitch. I'm just like, uh, I gotta turn that into a fucking really t-shirt. Dude, damn it. Yeah. Back in my Fuck. day, we had a game called Rock. Your parents hit you with it whenever you weren't doing your work. Yes. <laughs> and they, there was a follow-up game to that called Stick. If you told your parents no, they'd hit your hand until it broke. And that... if they broke all five fingers in one go, <laughs> they win. <laughs> then the stick was used then on your backside. Then this dude was used on your backside when you didn't do your chores. And then they shoved it in your ass if you didn't eat your peas. Oh, Christ. Now it just went weird. Oh, Damn Taylor, it, Taylor. We really need to talk about your upbringing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, guys, get that poor boy some peas. Your lawyer can't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, God. All right, so that's all I have, um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Do anyone else have anything else at this time? Um, I think Alsop wants us to talk about Hearthstone and all of its problems. But if we do, we'll be here until tomorrow morning. Oh, sweet yeah. Jeebus. And that is, a, oh, stop, that is a great thing that we can touch bases on in the next story. It'll give us a chance to take a look into what everybody has said and things that we've encountered ourselves. That wouldn't be a problem at all for a topic for us to touch on. And thank you for giving us a story idea. No, yeah, definitely, guys. So, okay. uh, so we'll just repeat this again. We'll just we'll we'll just repeat this again. If you guys have any story at all that you want us to talk about on the roundtable and you want us to talk about it live, then tag either Gamers and Mead, Dave the Nut, or Firebane in on those posts and use the hashtag GNM Talk with the link to the article. So just send us. So just tag us. Use the hashtag, and. And oh god, I'll stop. Well, yes. Yeah, we, we want. To, we no, we want. Wrong. No, no, the... I'll, I'll stop. It's it is it is this one. Oh god. Um, um we we want to get new stories on those sort of things. And the thing is, is you guys get to send us the articles and stuff because we also like to do our research to make sure that when we talk to you. And we're not just talking out our ass. We actually do research on the facts. We look stuff up. We talk to people and find out what's really going on. And yeah. so please send us your suggestions so that we can discuss those in future times. Yeah, exactly, too. And that's the thing, you know, because we actually want to have the ambition, too, that if we that if we can hopefully keep go keep this going and, get, and, and keep getting the show off the ground with your support, we would love to be able to actually get this to a point where we'd actually be able to to transition to somebody live out in the field. Um, you know, and taking interviews Dude, I was and shit. Just thinking about that. Because <laughs> no, because episode six, episode six, Shibo had to duck out early because he went to the midnight release of yeah. Final Fantasy fifteen. And yeah. we were like, Man, we wish he had I wish he had enough data to be able to get some interviews and shit. And well, guess what? We could do that. We wanna do that and is and you know, so so we so we would love to be able to get some information from you guys for topics that we would love to be able to interview people on or what have you. So like we said, send us the link to the article, tag one of us on Twitter or on Facebook or wherever and use make sure you use the hashtag GNM Talk. Ye. Definitely. But dude, you just read my friggin' mind, man. I was like, that'd be so cool if like that we were doing this uh, roundtable and like you know, I was just leaving the mall and just what walk around and be like, "Hey, what did you have time to talk about X Y Z game? What are your thoughts?" Yeah, we should, we should do that. We should definitely do that. Too bad the mall like actually closes when the my store closes. <laughs> yeah, that always does kind of hurt. Yeah, I'll just bo I'll just like rush people while they're trying to get to their car. Hey, excuse me, wait. <laughs> You know, nine o'clock at what night. What the hell's going on out here? In a, in a dimly lit parking lot. That's not weird at all. Oh <laughs> yeah, no, totally normal. Happens every day. Wear a ski mask first. <laughs> well, obviously, I gotta get a black ski mask. Like, how else are they gonna know I'm a reporter if I don't have a black ski mask? Well, no, well, no, <laughs> dude, dude, no. You gotta do bandana, sunglasses, and a ball cap. That's the only way you do it. That's the only way well, you do it. And drive up with a van without windows. Yeah, a white van. And then just what, right, 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 rape van on it because it's clear. Like, if you've seen Workaholics, you know what I'm talking about. Does this smell like chloroform? Just, apparently, fun fact, it takes like 20 seconds for chloroform to actually work when you do that. So you're really just smothering them. And does yeah. anybody else find it creepy that Taylor actually knows this as a fun fact and calls it I a think fun that fact? Work. <laughs> <laughs> I made a joke to one of my coworkers. I'm like, this smell like cold room? It's like, oh, actually, fun fact. And I'm like, uh, that's kind of actually a weird fact, but yeah. all right, I'll take uh, it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Disciple has something. Talk about Disgea 2 on PC Sky coming out on Steam. Dis right, well, okay, we'll take a look at that. Disgea 2. What's Disgea 2? I haven't heard anything about that. It's something that we're going to look up. All right, definitely. So what do you guys say? We put that in the back pocket for next episode? Yeah. Yes. Guys, just remember, use the hashtag GNM Talk. Tweet any, really any of us, well, one of us three using that yeah. on Twitter, Facebook, whatever the fuck we're all on. <laughs> yeah. And we will definitely be able to uh, look into it. That way we can actually get some solid details rather than us reading off of a news feed. <laughs> yeah, 
definitely. And, you know, you've given uh, Taylor here a follow by following Gamers in Need. If you've been enjoying the show, thank you very much for that. Definitely. Make sure you swing by Dave the Nuts channel and give him a follow right there, definitely. And, and if you are ever so inclined, swing by my show. You go ahead and tap the follow button if you'd like to check me out there. But as always, we tend to be here on Monday. That's right, Monday yeah. at about 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. Uh, is about the reason you look right close around to the end of work. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to... we're gonna Because that's the thing. With the, with the reason why this episode took so long to, to finally, like, you know, to get us all together is just because life has been really crazy for a lot of us. Uh, Taylor in particular, because Apple job and, and all that other crap. Plus, um, I had to restore my computer, so I haven't had time to set up OBS again. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> pretty much. But yeah, um, so we're ch- we're, ch- we're gonna try to make sure that we can stay to some type of <laughs> of 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 weekly ba- like if not weekly, then at least every other weekly basis. Um, so we're gonna try to keep to a schedule, so this way you guys can get you know that constant dose of of gamers roundtable because we want to be the reason why you like Mondays. Like, yeah, cause yeah, much. you could go to your nine to five. You could get yelled at by your boss, oh, and Spider-Man, you're being eaten. Wait, what? Uh, oh god! Oh god! Oh, what the fuck? Oh, Fireman! Oh god! Oh, got eaten. Uh, oh crap! Fireman. All right, everyone, go go follow Firebane's Twitch yeah. in honor of his memory. <laughs> yes, go and follow him. Just follow our fallen comrade, the one known as Firebane. He's been eaten by his own logo. His show has literally taken him over. <laughs> <laughs> it oh does that. god. Yeah. But yeah, so but but yeah, yeah, hashtag Mondays get good, exactly all stop. But yeah, so um, we've run out of stories tonight, so guys stoppel. If you wanna check back um, hopefully next Monday, and if not next Monday, then the Monday after for the next episode of Gamers Roundtable, we will definitely be talking about this Gia 2. Just make sure you get, um, to see if you can get us uh, an article or some kind of information about it, or even the link on the Steam store, and just send it to us on Twitter with the hashtag GNM Talk. We will definitely talk about it on the show, good sir. But so, until then, you guys, um, so Firebane looks like he's setting up for his stream. So, from Firebane, from Captain Tenrak, Taylor the Terrible, and from Dave the Nut, we thank you guys very much for coming here onto the Gamers Roundtable. Thank you guys so much. So make sure you drop us as um, we appreciate if you drop us all a follow if you guys if you guys um you know like what you see and oh, wait, until- wait 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 oh. <laughs> I'm not streaming tonight guys my apologies ladies and gentlemen I will not be streaming tonight I will be oh. streaming tomorrow night though for the actual horror game um, but tonight tomorrow afternoon I have an interview so I will not be streaming tonight ah uh, okay okay so you guys heard it first so the stream is tomorrow not tonight tomorrow night tomorrow night tomorrow oh, yeah night. If, if you guys if you guys enjoy what you see drop us all either all, all three of us a like follow subscribe whatever the fuck and if you guys really like what you see you guys could you know donate help the cause i know shameless t- shameless plug oh god but, shameless yeah, plug gotta do it every once in a while um that that way we can like you know upgrade tech get new shit i don't know that way i'm not you know having all these goddamn problems with my laptop yeah (laughs) so any any amount helps (laughs) yeah definitely so so for so for all you guys out there we appreciate every little bit it always helps so we will catch you guys around and until until the next monday that comes up we will save you guys a seat at the gamers round table keep drinking keep gaming either way stay drunk because <laughs> we won't on a daily i mean, on, I mean I, eh. sort of d- d- oh, there. maybe yeah. and thank you for the follow sergeant snuggles what a way to what a way to end the show thank you so much for the follow yeah we will see thank you guys you we will see you guys next monday night have a good one you guys and thanks for tuning Peace. in purse toss out